What do you know about voodoo? Well, mostly any, everything that we've known about voodoo or our experience of it is of something, you know, kind of evil and where, um, you know, little, you know, we get this from James Bond movies and things like that and where, where they're, uh, you know, little dolls and you stick a pin in them and then uh, the doll represents someone that you want to put the, you know, the, the hooju on and so they, you know, they get a backache or, you know, headache or something like that. And it's really, you know, it's not such a good thing. And that's about all we know and, and uh, or that it's very, you know, mystical and they do it in Haiti and that sort of thing. Well, we were just in uh, Benin, Togo, and Ghana in West Africa. And in this area, this is the heart of the voodoo or voodoo religion. And there are several different, it has different names for it. We always generically call it voodoo, but they, it can be called uh, vondon, vodon, vaudu. It's a number of different uh, pronunciations and names for it, but it basically it's the same thing. And it is a form, it's an ancient form of uh, spirits, both of inanimate objects and of living creatures continuing on beyond their normal life. So for example, you know, if your grandmother or great grandmother, she, there was a spirit there and uh, she continues on in uh, the spirit world and can be contacted. Similarly with animals, uh, pythons, uh, crocodiles, uh, um, oh, it, uh, I suppose even trees. Uh, trees have a big part in um, voodoo religion because they are a living thing and every living thing has a spirit. And there is a whole uh, panoply of of spirits and deities that have kind of a pecking order and are embodied in the spirit of these different uh, of these different objects. And so, for example, uh, the uh, and it's very female oriented. So, for example, uh, uh, Legba. Okay, Legba is a deity, and she is the chief of all the other voodoo deities. Um, the divine creator who is above her even is female. So, you know, in, a, in other religions, we call it Allah, we call it uh, uh, God, but that uh, head person is uh, Mawa or Mahu, and she is female. And uh, she's all forgiving, very gentle, and she owns all the other gods. And then there are different, almost like with Greek gods or Roman gods, there's different levels and, you know, who is a daughter of who and a son of who and so forth. And so there's all these different different levels of these spirits. But the point is this uh, religion is, uh, religious practice is still practiced uh, in West Africa. And because a lot of the slaves came from, African slaves came from West Africa when they went to the Caribbean and then to the United States, uh, and other parts uh, carried with them this traditional religion. And so that's why in Haiti you've got that. And that's why in uh, parts of, you know, in Louisiana, uh, some of this uh, uh, continues to thrive. So we wanted to get a little bit uh, better idea about this. And so uh, we were in Benin for a couple of days. In this video, I'm gonna show you, you you'll see, uh, uh, kind of follow our travels a little bit. And I'm gonna show you the some of these uh, deities, there are statues of them. One, uh, you know, he has a very erect uh, penis and he is, he is sort of the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, voodoo god of fertility, as, as you might imagine. There's a god of the tree. Uh, pythons, we visited a, a python temple. And if a python crosses your path, that's very good luck. Um, there are certain spirits that are in pythons and, and if you, uh, are able to put a python around your neck or come in very close contact with a python. That's very good luck. And so they have kind of a little gimmicky thing where uh, they, there are also where tourists come up and you can put a python around your neck and that's supposed to purify your spirit and so forth. And, and yes, of course, I did that. Um, but there are also local people that are doing that uh, as well. Um, the 
most interesting part of this video, and I, I please watch uh, to the end, or if you didn't like what I was talking about now, then just zoom ahead. But um, at the end, we witnessed a voodoo ceremony, uh, which usually is done at night uh, when villagers, in, in, in a village, when villagers are in their huts. Because what this is portraying, what goes on in this ceremony, is there is a deity called the Zangbeto, the Zangbeto. And the Zangbeto is like a, a spirit that is inside and in a, a haystack, to, you know, for a better, lack of a better term. The haystack turns uh, almost like, a, 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 turns around in a, in a dizzying kind of a manner, almost like uh, Sufism. Uh, or in the uh, the dervishes where they twirl themselves into a trance and that's similar to what's going on with this haystack and the haystack can transform itself into different spirits so what happens and we witness this ceremony and part of this haystack the reason it happens is at night and nobody is there is that the haystack is supposed to uh, uh, protect the village and sweep away all of the evil uh, spirits and, and evil that may uh, befall that village. We were very fortunate to witness one of these ceremonies that was done in the daytime, and yes, it was done for tourists, but it drew uh, villagers from all over the place who had never seen this ceremony because uh, it was always at night and they were inside their huts, and so they came from all around, and it was really, they were, you know, you could tell they were really amazed with this thing. This took place in the village of Ouida, Oh. I O U I D A Wida, and every year there is an international voodoo conference that uh, takes a place in uh, in Wida. As this Zangbeto twirls, there are certain points where uh, it will it will do whatever spirit is inside that Zangbeto. Uh, it 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 does things. So, for example, uh, it'll start to shake. And then a crocodile came out. It, I mean, it was a small crocodile, but it was literally a crocodile. And so one of the guys surrounding the Zangbeto picked up the crocodile and showed it to the to the crowd. And then it sort of wiggled toward the crowd. And you know, everybody goes, "Oh my God, here comes this crocodile!" And there was a another part where uh, the Zangbeto stopped, and the controllers around it tipped it upside down, and there was nothing inside. You could see there was absolutely nothing inside. So how was this thing doing that? Um, there was another point where the Zangbeto is going around and uh, the, uh, uh, it started flapping its arms. Well, there's nobody inside flapping. Uh, the, uh, the other part was, an, uh, uh, they, and I have this in, in the film, the, uh, in the video, the, they uh, tipped the thing over and a little weird um, toy uh, machine robot came out and was, going like this uh, and it, it is amazing okay I'm gonna leave you to figure out okay how do they really do this was there really a spirit in there I, I'm not questioning their religion but it re really was truly amazing so uh, and there were, you, there were times where the, the guys controlling this or you know monitoring the the Zangbeto were talking to it and sometimes you know it'll be the voice of uh, um, you know, a, a, a long lost relatives that's telling you what you should do uh, that, that relative is dead, but their spirit is still there. Okay, long explanation. Please watch the video. If you like uh, this kind of, um, some, you know, we would call it oddball stuff, but I mean, this, the, it, this religion is practiced uh, uh, to a certain extent in this particular part of Africa, and it was really, really interesting. Stay tuned. Well, today, the, our two clueless travelers are in <laughs> Benin in West Africa. So we just got here. We're spending the day here in Benin. It's a short visit, but we are now at this big central square, which gives honor to this native warrior female chief uh, who at some point in uh, Benin's history uh, led an army of women uh, warriors. And our guide has told us that uh, women are very important in this country, as they should be. Do you agree, Tanya? I agree. Tanya they agrees. They protected the kingdom. They protected the kingdom. Yeah. Now they Fierce. Fiercely. And so they've made this huge statue, and uh, everyone comes out here and takes... Right now we're outside the Python Temple, 
which is a voodoo temple here in the town of Lija in Benin. And uh, apparently there's a certain group of people, or even a lot of them around this town, that worship these python because, do you remember exactly what the story was? With the, they're sacred for some reason. Saved them from some uh, great calamity at, at some point. Uh, it looks a little gimmicky to me, but uh, because our guide says, well, you can go in there and you can put them around your neck and you can touch them or whatever, but don't worry, they're not like an anaconda. They won't crush you and they won't bite. So uh, we're going to go see what this is all about. From a distance. The, from, a distance the, from a distance. The Temple of the Pythons. And our, our uh, guide is very insistent that we get going here. Well, Tiny, do you kind of feel like you're... Uh, Harrison Ford in uh, the Temple of Doom. <laughs> Something. Something like that. Something like Maybe that. Maybe there'll be a pit there that is that is absolutely full of uh, pythons, and our job is to try and extricate ourselves. I might also mention that this appears to be a real highlight for older travelers, and since our channel kind of dedicates itself to those kind of people, looks like uh, looks like they're about to really get the. Uh, the thrill of their lives. Let's go. Well, this whole concept of uh, putting a python, a python around your neck, uh, it can't be that bad because this reminds me of the snake lady we had at the uh, officers club at Fort Eustis uh, back in the 70s. And, uh, you know, she did amazing things with that snake, so I, I think uh, we can certainly put the thing around our neck. Oh, certainly. Tanya agrees.